Hey folks, welcome into the News 12 Now Desk. Thanks for joining us here on this Wednesday, February 22nd. We are taking a look at some of our top headlines, some of the big things going on in our area, some of the things that you guys are clicking on over on our website, WRDW.com, getting a lot of attention. So we'll go ahead and take a little bit deeper look at a few of those stories. Now, we start off in Waynesboro. Uh, with sheriff or the investigation into the Waynesboro Police Department continuing, as authorities say they discovered irregularities in a former employee's training record. Now the GBI is looking into the matter. In a Facebook post, Burke County Sheriff Alfonso Williams responded to the GBI investigation regarding the officer's training record. Take a listen. December 2022, I was contacted by Officer Gary Jenkins, who realized that he needed two classes uh, two hours each, which is required. I agree, agreed to give him uh, the uh, instruction and give him credit for the instruction uh, after the instruction was complete. I did do that. I told him that I would get the training uploaded to the computer. Our I team is continuing to look into the disparities in the case. Last Friday, we asked the sheriff's office about the investigation, and they denied any involvement or knowledge of the GBI's investigation. But we later found out they had, in fact, uploaded documents to the GBI for this very case earlier that week. So, again, digging a little bit deeper into updates there with the sheriff's office and the Waynesboro Police Department. In Aiken County, a family is on a long road to recovery after a car accident Friday night. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that crash. Highway Patrol says the accident happened around 930 on Augusta Road near Dibble Road. Troopers say a Honda Accord was headed south while a pickup truck was going north. The two vehicles collided and Jalen Eubanks was severely injured. Now his mother is speaking out about Jaylen's, how Jalen's brother saved his life. I know I would not be here because he wasn't breathing and there was nobody there. If Bryson hadn't have pulled the door off and got him out and got that seabed off of his neck, he would not be here. <laughs> this is definitely his angel. Both Jalen and his brother were riding in the Chevy pickup that crashed. His mom said Jalen fractured his sternum, broke ribs, and his ankle. He has had two surgeries since Friday with more planned on his arm, neck, and back. Four people are behind bars after a shooting on Sedgefield Drive yesterday. Richmond County deputies say a man was found shot multiple times and taken to the hospital. Witnesses say they heard gunshots around 1.30 in the afternoon. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office says four people were arrested and charged with aggravated assault. The Sheriff's Office is also investigating a shooting that happened on Southgate Plaza at the corner of Gordon Highway and Tubman Road. They say a man was shot at least once and taken to the hospital. Authorities have identified a suspect. As of this morning, investigators have not released the name or the description of that suspect just yet. So two shootings uh, there in Augusta. A permanent solution to the lighting issues on Green Street is on the way. Augusta leaders approved funding for a new, green, uh, for a new lighting project. Green Street in Old Town has been mostly in the dark for months now, but there are temporary solar lights in place and a permanent solution is coming. Leaders originally had fixing the lights as part of a larger downtown development project, but yesterday they decided to separate those plans and spend $800,000 immediately to get permanent lights for Green Street. City leaders say people on Green Street can rest easy knowing their lighting will be fixed as they continue to work on the rest of the downtown plan. This is an opportunity for us to do something very major. It's going to have some growing pains in the meantime. Folks are going to be uh, inconvenienced for a little while, but I hope that folks will understand that this is huge, that this is great, and that we should all get behind it and, and try, to, try to grow with it. They still have to approve the full downtown plan. Leaders say it will make its first appearance at next week's committee meetings. The Georgia Supreme Court upheld the murder conviction of an Augusta mother. Marina Middlebrooks was sentenced to life in prison without parole for stabbing her two-year-old daughter to death in 2013. Middlebrooks pled not guilty by reason of insanity because she believed she and her daughter had to get to heaven to avoid persecution. The state Supreme Court denied a motion for a new trial. Our I-team has reported ongoing issues within Georgia's foster care system. Now officials are asking questions about $28 million spent in the past year. Reports show the money went towards hotel stays instead of finding homes for children. Georgia Senator John Ossoff is leading the investigation alongside a Republican senator from Tennessee. Ossoff says his primary goal is clarity. This practice of keeping vulnerable children 
in hotels and offices for months on end is shocking and unacceptable. And the fact that it may have been going on for years is shocking and unacceptable. Activists are also calling for change so the system better suits foster kids and foster families. Years ago, President Carter visited Thompson to take a look at an old home with a connection to his own past. Turns out a McDuffie County woman has a special connection to Carter. Her ancestors built the home back in the 1700s. Our Will Rio spent the day shining new light on an old story linking Jimmy Carter to Thompson. For some, this is just an old house. But for Judy Candler, she's stepping through the doorway of her family's history. I am a descendant of James, who was the eighth child and final child of Thomas Ansley. Thomas Ansley came from North Carolina with the Quakers. He settled and built the Rock House in 1786 in what was called the Wrightsboro community at the time. He produced this beautiful three-story home for his family. There is a basement area, there is a main floor living area, and then the third level would have been living quarters for and sleeping arrangements for the children. From Thomas Ansley all the way down the family tree comes former President Jimmy Carter, making Judy and Carter fifth cousins. To know that he and I are cousins just gives me a little extra pride. When Carter was governor of Georgia, he took time to visit the home. Was saddened by its condition. It was in great disrepair as it is now and voiced that he would offer financial support for the repair and reconstruction of the home. Now the home is on the National Register of Historic Places. The fact that he has dedicated so much of his life to serving others. In Thompson, Will Rio on your side. And it's just been it's just been so cool to see these connections that we're seeing with former President Carter. Uh, Will and I actually did kind of a breakdown of the family tree between that woman he spoke to, Judy Candler, uh, and Jimmy Carter, and how we kind of broke it all down. So uh, they share great, 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 great grandparents, Thomas Ansley and Rebecca Cox. And then as you make your way down, uh, that's where you get to Judy Candler and um, Jimmy Carter, fifth cousins again. So uh, actually, too, there was an incident with Jimmy Carter's great-great-grandfather, Wiley Carter, and he and his wife, Anne, actually moved out of Thompson to Plains, Georgia. So if that hadn't happened, Jimmy Carter could very well be from Thompson. And we do love hearing all these local connections. So if you have any, be sure to let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on the local connection with Jimmy Carter. Check this out. Doctors from AU have a new kind of medicine already helping out local patients. It's a vibrating pill, doctors say, is help, uh, used to help shake up the colon. They say you charge them until the light turns green on the container. You take five capsules a week at night, and then they leave your body. So far, it's prescribed to two Augusta patients and FDA approved. It has been approved by FDA, and, uh, and we have prescribed this to our first clinical patients now. I think we are the pioneers in this. So I think that, remember, this capsule is only available in America, not even in any other country in the world. So first approved in the U.S., and we are one of the first sites where we actually given it to patients. So Pretty cool to see Augusta kind of spearheading that sort of uh, technology and research. And you can find, about, uh, find out about these stories and much more over on our website, WRDW.com. If you are watching this on our website or on our Facebook page, be sure to download our WRDW streaming app. You can do that on your favorite streaming device, whether that's your Roku, your Apple TV, your Fire Stick. Uh, you can just search WRDW and download that. It is free to download, and it will give you all of our latest I-Team investigations, first alert weather forecasts, uh, all of our bonus content, Ariel Augusta, sports coverage, live newscasts, everything you're going to need when it comes to News 12 is on there. And, again, it's free, so why not go ahead and give that a download. Also, we just fired up a YouTube channel, so go ahead and follow that. Uh, again, that's free, too. So any way you could stay up to date on our local community. We are trying to bring you that best coverage that we possibly can. That's going to do it for our Tuesday headlines. We will see you, or excuse me, it's Wednesday, halfway through the week. Happy hump day. It's it for our Wednesday headlines. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Thursday's top headlines. Have a good one.